Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to be doing some more network automation and in this video we're again going to be looking at Nonio but this time we're going to be focusing on what in my opinion might be the most important and useful part of network automation which is the ability to quickly roll back and effectively conduct full reparation on your network in the event of some unwanted change. Now the way we're going to do that is by using the tool Git. You might have heard of GitHub, we're going to be integrating that with Git, but you're going to see just how powerful this tool really is. So what I'm going to do is effectively put out some changes automatically. We're going to imagine that a junior network engineer wields the power of automation, makes a terrible change, and we're going to roll back and correct that change very, very easily. And you're going to see how quickly it can be done and how easily it can be done. So that's the kind of plan for this video. So let's just kick on and do it. Okay, so let's just go over to the terminal then. So what I've done here, I've just created a folder called get. So I did an mkdir git, okay? Now, if you're at home and following along, you'll need to actually download git. So just do an, as an app get install and just basically download the actual program gets you've got it on your machine, okay? So if I do an ls here, what I've done is I've copied some of the configuration files from my Nornier folder into the git one, okay? Just so we can work on it from in here. Now what you're going to see is, is if I do an ls la, we don't have any, well you don't see the hidden git folder because it's not actually initialized. So what I need to do is, first thing first to get git working in this folder in which I'm working, I'll just do a git in it, okay? Now it's going to initialize it. Now if I do an ls la, we'll see we'll get this hidden git folder, which doesn't appear if you just do a basic ls. This is where git is effectively versioning all of your files and keeping track of them, okay? So if I did a git add, and I added these files, say config.yaml, config.text, and do a git status, we'll see we're actually tracking these ones and not tracking these ones but I want to track them all so I'll just do a git add and do a dot and that'll add them all okay so that's everything in this file is now being tracked by git so the first thing I need to do is effectively set up my email and my username and then I'll make my first commit okay so let's go and do that so just do a git config global if I can type <laughs> user dot my typing is terrible. <laughs> right, IPv0 at gmail.com and enter. Now get the username, get config global, and we'll just do user.name and the user will be IPv0. Okay. Those are the basic configurations which we need. So if I just do my gain, my get status and do a git log. We've not actually committed anything, okay? So what I need to do is first commit these files, okay? That's effectively saving it to the, the actual local repository on my machine here, okay? So the way to do that is just do a git commit and do a dash all because I want to commit them all. And I need to give it a message. So I'll just say, this is my very first ever commit. Oh, if I do dash dash all would help. There we go, and it now says it's created them. So if I do a git log, we're going to see that this is my very first commit, and it's effectively created a hash of that commit, okay? So we can actually recall this very particular commit out of a bunch of them by specifying this hash, okay? So what I'm going to do is effectively make some changes to the network. Rather, I'm going to push out my changes first, and then make some changes and see what happens. Okay, see what git detects. So let's go and do that. So first let's look at the script. You'll probably recognize this one, but let's do vim test3. Effectively all we're doing is using this configuration text file called config underscore text to push out some changes to the network. Um, we've got a filter on here for ASN123, but all devices are in ASN123, so it doesn't really matter. Um, if we just go back here, and we'll look at the actual config text file. So if I vim that, this is going to simulate some type of complex information or complex configuration that isn't easily um, replaceable or repairable. And it's just a, basically a banner, okay? So, uh, so you can see this is me simulating some type of complex configuration by making the banner a little bit fancy, okay? So this is the change we're going to push out to the network. This is the change that should be on the configuration. So let's just go and push that out first. Python 3 test.
the Nornir's pushed out that change. And if we go over to the devices, we'll see that they should each have this banner. There we go, IPv0. Grab another one randomly. IPv0. So this is the way we they want the network to be effectively. This is the changes we want, okay? But like I say, we're going to simulate that something goes very, very wrong. So let's go in and start editing um, some files. So we're a junior engineer now, okay? And they'd make the decision to push out a configuration that they shouldn't. Again, we are representing this by just a simple banner configuration, but imagine this might be some BGP thing, some complex configuration that shouldn't be changed or whatnot. So if we go into vim config underscore text, okay? And let's just go into visual mode and, oh, oh visual mode. X that out and do a insert banner MOTD and just say junior admin banner. Okay. And that's the change made, okay? So if they deploy the script out now. There has now been a radical change to the network, so let's just quickly look at that. Exit out. And now our banner is just this, okay? So effectively we've got a severe problem in the network. Let's imagine we've got the boss calling us, saying there's very bad problems, we need to get it fixed really, really quickly. What do we do? Okay, so the clock's ticking. Money is just pouring down the drain and the boss is breathing down your neck. What are you going to do? Well, you could troubleshoot it. You could try to find out what you know, do some kind of diagnostic testing. Or, because we're running git, what we can just simply do is say, just click up here and do git status. Git is actually informing us two files have been changed. Ignore this one. This is Nornir log. That's just because Nornir has made some uh, changes to the network. The one we're going to see is we see the config.txt has been changed. So what we'll do is we'll just do a git diff. Tell me the difference with that file. Oh. Okay. And you can see in the red, this is everything that's been removed from that text file. And in the green, this is everything that's been added. So effectively, whoever's been in this text file has deleted all this stuff and removed all that and as you can see if we go into the actual text file that's true all we've got is this uh, little boring banner so we say do you know what uh, we need to get this solved straight away how do we fix it well using getting non together we can revert back and push out this change no bother so all we'll do is we'll just do get checkout and tell it the file so the file name is config.txt okay that's it roll back so if we now do a get status You'll see that there's no changes to that file anymore. So if we go into and do vim and config text, it's now back, okay? So what we can just do quickly is just push out that change again. And that's us restored the network to full health, been completely rolled back. If we go back to the device here, do an enter, exit, and now we're back to where we are. We've basically restored the network really, really quickly and the boss is very, very happy with us. Okay, so the next thing. Now, how does this actually relate to GitHub? I'm sure you've probably heard about that one. Well, GitHub is, think of it as a remote site where we can offload these configuration files. So let's just go to my GitHub just quickly. And I'm just going to add a new repository for testing. And we'll just say test. We'll make it public and create the repository. Okay, so now if we just take this, and we're going to add this, okay. Just paste that in, add that. And to initialize it, we need to put some file on it. So I'm just going to put the text files on it to the master branch. It's going to prompt me for my username, which is IPv0, and my password, which I can't tell you. <laughs> oh, fucking type it incorrectly. 
and that's us. So if we actually go to the site now, this actual repository test, all those files have now been up uploaded. See that? So where's my config text? That's all there. And it's all uploaded. So we've now got it on GitHub where we can clone it, download it. Other people can access it, work collaboratively together, and that's pretty much it. So what I just want to just show you quickly is just two six. If we actually go in to the actual script, let's just make some random changes here, okay? Let's say someone was trying to make some make the script work for them in some way that it shouldn't, okay? So they kind of butchered it, they maybe they made a mess of the syntax, there was some things wrong here. Okay. Save this again. Okay, so just again as we had, get status, see there's a change in it. Get diff. And it's really easy to see the actual code. We can see this has been taken off. This new stuff with the bad syntax has been added. We don't want it, so we'll just get checkout. And if we do vim, we've now got it back to the way it was, okay? But what I'm going to do is just quickly, if we add, um, let's just add some comments in this, okay? Uh, insert, oh, rather. So this is just a comment for purposes of testing. Okay. Now, oh, if we save that. Now what I'm going to do is actually go and commit this change, okay? Okay, so I'm just going to do a get commit all and the message I'm going to give it is this is my second commit and just put my name next to it, John. Okay. So the file has been changed, okay. So what I'm going to do now is just push this out. So if I do a git push and just do u origin and I want to put it to the master, okay. IPv0, put in my password for GitHub. And that's it now uploaded. So let's have a look at that. Go down here, clear that now. LS that. And if we go to our GitHub, we go into that script now. We should see that it's actually been updated here. See that little comment now? It's actually been updated now remotely. And if we go and click history, the this one here, it's actually highlighted it in green. This is the the change we've made effectively, so it's very, very easy to see. So that's pretty much the end of the video. I thought I'd just do a little bit of an introduction into Nornir and get together as your best solution for disaster recovery. And that's pretty much it. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.